tenderly as we all stand. From me, shadows are gathering, deathbeds are coming, coming for you and for me. Come home, come home, ye who are we. Brother Chris to do the prayer for us. Let us pray. Our most sovereign, eternal Father, we thank you in a special way for today. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness towards us. We thank you for the life of Brother Henry today that we could celebrate. Lord, we do place before you this morning his family. We pray that 
as the God of all consolation, that you, O oh God, will comfort each member of this family this morning. Again, we thank you for each one that is here today. We pray, O oh God, that you will give grace, give strength as we lead to rest our dear brother. We pray for your word that will be going out today. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would strengthen Pastor Henry as he comes to bring your word that give him much unction from above. We pray that your word, O oh God, will take root in the hearts of the heralds today. Bless the service here this morning. Undertake for us as we ask all this in our Savior's name. Amen. Remain standing as we turn to our second song on the same on the same first page on Christ the solid rock. <laughs> it. I now call on the children of Brother Capri, those who have tributes to give, to come to the stage. And all, the, and all those who else have tribute to give, I encourage you to make your way to the stage. Morning, all.
words are inadequate. Sometimes words just come up short. No poetry can do justice to just have or be in the presence of my father. For the fortunate few, we are blessed. Zephyrus Henry, Capri, Zepha, Phineas, Eo, Brother Capri, Brother Henry. These are some of the names of one man. However, with his broad shoulders, he carried them with olive pride. At home, is more Henry, Daddy, or Daddy. Husband, father, brother, grandfather, uncle. Very good sense of humor, very slow to anger. To my mother, she made a vow to my father, and she did that till the end. Thank you, mother. was the first daddy's girl of the bunch. <coughs> Naisha Ishmue is what he would call me. He didn't spoil me, but he always tried to give me what I needed. <coughs> when mommy and I butted heads and we did a lot, he would calm me and he would gently say to me, Naisha, a soft answer to never a rough. All the times he would say, be angry and sin not, and would pinch against my neck, at which point I would stop and smile. I used to laugh when I heard mommy saying, Henry, oh, speak to Naisha, and he would laugh. Daddy had the best work ethic. He taught, he taught me that anything you started, make sure to finish it and do it well. He would say, we're doing that first class, and he would raise his thumb and say, top class thing. Don't let anybody say anything negative about the quality of your work. Always give quality, which was proven in his work. When daddy straightened a piece of steel, it was straight. And when he gave you a gate, you had it for life. Daddy was always there for everything for all of us. Sunday school, camp, graduations, weddings, for the grandkids, he was there. And he would always say, we're doing that grandstand, yes? He was a man of God, not perfect, but upright. He was a walking Bible and a Bible study. I have not met another person like him who loved to debate the word of God, that he was always ready to evangelize and kept himself knowledgeable of all his beliefs. He had all religious books from the Quran to the Book of Mormon, and he would, he would always say, when they come, we're ready. <laughs> Look... Like everybody, like everybody else, we would get our daily dose of scripture. Devotion was a staple at our house, and everybody who went through our home can attest to that. He didn't care who you were, or, but you would have to wake up for devotion in the morning. Daddy was the most jovial, happy person you could find. Didn't stay angry and enjoyed life to the fullest. He, his laugh was infectious and his smile was wide as the ocean, which he loved. He wasn't perfect, but he did his best and I'm proud to be his daughter. Like he would, say, like he would always say, traveling mercy's daddy. Good day. My daddy my Henry Capri, Mr. Henry, 
I know my dad to be very joyous, full of laughter and determined, a one-minded individual in Almighty God, anything for his God, and he will defend his God till death. Everyone knows him to be a giver, a joker, and lots more. He can't meet you without cracking a joke, even if he was the only one who laughs. His positive energy will be transferred to you in any, in any conversation. He will dress anyone for church, and sometimes on any other day, you will see him razzle with his work clothes in town, <laughs> his red shorts. <laughs> he has the smallest handwriting and wanted to give you the best quality of work. His phrase, let me finish fresa, says a Ted Beth. He walked on all bridges in the earlier days from the north to the south and the schools in the south. Losing you is a sad moment, but I know you will prefer us to celebrate because you have gone to meet Almighty God. Rest in peace, my father, brother, friend, love. I love you. Till we meet again. Daddy, a man of God, every sentence you spoke had a backup scripture verse. Very humble, always joyful, sorry, always jovial, very friendly, but talkative as well. A simple man, but very complex. We always had our debates and discussions about life. Most times, you get so engrossed that in the convo, you'll end up washing dishes and sell them this was not your doing. He encouraged me to be my own woman and pursue my own path. For this, I am forever grateful. Food was your best friend. Whenever Sister Vivi brought your fish container at home, your smile would widen from air to air. I remember you having me cook my first one pot back then in OJ. You gave me a thumbs up for efforts. Eventually, I got a top chef ranking. And a little secret, you told me I was doing mommy competition. <laughs> But one thing when it came to cleaning up, no one could apply perfume like you. Mm -hmm. Your scent would reach the outside and we all knew that you have babes for the day. Mm -hmm. A man who loved his family, you'll always be missed them. last last this was introduction or even the high-end chic introduction my Tyra Banks special mm -hmm. I'm always on the cock walking well, in my father's eyes whenever I was to leave the house when he got a look of me he would say don't get stolen in town make sure you watch everywhere with his generous smile, and the one I still can't seem to understand. Once I leave the house with him, try I look your cousin. <laughs> I would just shake my head and follow suit and be, hi, nice to meet you, cousin. <sighs> to the point where you told me, you're my walking stick. And I was literally in home. Oh. Mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just mm would say that I was spoiled because I'm the last last. <laughs> but what I will always say now, 
than before. I'm not spoiled. I was highly loved by both parents. And the love that they both shared with each other was not compared to any. I just want to say, my father was his own, his own unique taste, his own unique seasoning to every sauce, every laughter, every story, in each and every one of our lives. And it will never be forgotten and will always be remembered daily. Thank you. Zephyrin as Henry, but we call him Fios, Zephyr, Donsi, Eo. Um, Daddy did. Eo, c'est un petit maman qui était toujours bien discipline. Il partait jeune, pièce l'occasion, puis il allait à soi, puis bail coup pour faire pièce en rien. Il toujours était devant pour aider. Pour exemple, les mamans habitent à des tenues pour un jardin, les bons matins, bon air avant l'école. Ils disent qu'ils quittent hier et puis c'est les autres là, ça c'est nous. So ils ont des cabanons um, dité <coughs> et qui ont agi que peintait toutes ces filles. <coughs> Mam, no matter what mood she's in. As soon as um, her son walks in, even if she cannot remember him, for some reason, I don't know if it's the bright smile, you'll see her brighten up. Yes, I think the bright smile and the beautiful personality. This is from Gwes, my brother, and I were very close. He was a loving and gentle soul and a great brother to me. It saddens me to know when I visit my sister-in-law, he would no longer be in a shop working, and I will no longer be able to have our long chats and all the great laughs. I also remember all the trips to visit the family in Daba and going to the farm to collect his favorites. I love you, bro, so much, and will miss you dearly. Celsa. When we were of school age, my brother provided um, all of us, his, his young siblings, with all our school supplies every year. He was a very generous person, always thought of others. When he visited Daba, he'll make sure he has carried enough stuff from the garden to share with his entire community. When I moved um, to Daba a few years ago to be for our parents, I was not worried because I knew I had my co-pilot, Io, for any eventuality. Parce que mes services en pinez grand maison. Christine. My brother Eo Odunsi, as he was affectionate known to us, was a giant of a man. He was a great brother. I didn't know Eo very well growing up as a kid. He's nine years older than me. And by the time I was able to understand and remember the people around me, he had migrated to Viewfort for school at the end, tender age of 11 to 12. We really connected when I was about secondary school age. I can remember him coming home from time to time, especially on Christmas and for any special events, as he was a photographer. As I grew older, I started frequenting Viewfort and we got closer. I'm the godmother of his first child. 
He was always a happy person. I can't remember ever seeing or hearing him upset with anyone. He likes a good argument, especially his politics, and would have a good laugh after all, after all was said and done. He had an infectious smile and an envious personality. He was always supportive of the family in any way he could. I love you and always will love you. Words will never be able to do justice to that love. Let the angels escort you home, brother. And Vianney, this is a very sad day for all of us as we say our final goodbye and celebrate the life of a beautiful soul. My brother, Zephyrinus Henry, also known as Don't See, Eo, which are the nicknames that I had for him as a child. I love him and will miss him so much, but will cherish every moment, every visit, and every phone call we shared together. His infectious smile will live in my heart forever. I remember getting so excited that I would not sleep much the night before visiting him. I could hardly wait for the bus to arrive at his residence to call his name and see that big and beautiful smile. Sometimes my visits were for a few minutes or a few hours and it would be the highlight of that day. I love spending time with his beautiful family at Miss Alice and his home. My brother was also the family photographer and would look forward to his visits, especially during the holidays to take family photos. I had a special connection to EO even after I moved away to Canada. He often called me a worry rat. And during his illness, he would always call to make sure I was not stressed or worried. He would always tell me to smile and stay strong because he is at peace with his situation. Rest in peace, don't see. You will continue to live in my nieces and nephew. Until we meet again, I love you so much and miss you always. Your baby sister, Vianney. Good day, everyone. <clears throat> Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Zephyrinus Capri Henry. A ray of sunshine which lit up any room with his signature smile. A man of God, and I dare say a man after God's own heart. A man who epitomized Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Uncle believed and lived by the word of God. Even on his bed of affliction, he tried to comfort me by cracking jokes about his condition. On one occasion, when I walked into his hospital room, his greeting made me forget why I was there. We were laughing so much, even the nurse was confused when she came to hook him up to the machine. He then looked at her and said, my daughter is going nowhere. He never called me his niece, always his daughter. Khalil recalls the joyous moments which he spent with uncle and his family during his vacation. The amicable atmosphere and the laughter all around while the family engaged in baking bread. We, were con we are confident that he is absent from this mortal body, but present with the Lord. I believe he would have liked to say to us today, weep not for me like those who have no hope, but cherish your memories of me. For the wicked is driven away in his wickedness, but the righteous have hope in death. Wherefore the rather brethren, give diligence to your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. 
Uncle, you were ready to meet your maker. God saw you getting tired and a cure was not to be. So he put his arms around you and whispered, come home to me. A golden heart stopped beating, hard working hands at rest. God broke our hearts to prove to us he only takes the best. Family and friends, I live with you Uncle's last words to me via text. May the Lord lead you in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. God bless you. A tribute to Brother Copper from the church, the Berean Baptist Church. Brother Henry, Brother Capri, Henry O, Daddy O. These are but the, the stages of titles you would come to use as you came to know and love him. Brother Capri has been to, us, been to us a dear friend, a brother, a pillar in our church, Sunday school teacher, camp leader, the loudest and most beautiful of all the voices in our congregation, and a living embodiment of what Paul said in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. An amazing father, faithful husband, hardworking provider, are the outshoots of, those, of, of who he was as a person. He was strong and lion-hearted in the faith, Never ashamed to proclaim the gospel. Eager to go evangelize and give the gospel as it is to those who are eager to hear it and those who won't. Brother Capri was a walking hymnal and biblical encyclopedia in one. Every day, and even from the depths of these troops that he consumed, every day he was able to smile, encourage others, be uplifting, laughing, and sharing. Even in cancer, he never stopped laughing. Lord Jesus, from your hands you have given us this brother. And into your hands, we, in tears but with much thankfulness, give him unto you. To quote one of the verses from his favorite hymn, In Tenderness He Sought Me, it says, He pointed to the nail prints, for me his blood was shed. A mocking crown so thorny was placed upon his head. I wonder what he saw in me to suffer such deep agony. <laughs> oh, the love that sought me. Oh, the blood that bought me. Oh, the grace that brought me to the fold. Wonderful grace that brought me to the fold. Amen. Amen. <sighs> Let us all stand as we sing our next scripture verse. I'm um, sorry. Sing our next hymn. It is well with my soul.
have your seats. I now call on Brother Chris who will do the scripture reading for us. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. I'll be reading from verses 1 to 13. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 13. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to, be, to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What gain, what gain has the worker from his toil? I have seen the business that God has given to the children of man to be busy with. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I perceive that there is nothing better for man than to be joyful and to do good as long as they live. 
also that everything, sorry, everyone, also that everyone should eat and drink and take pleasure in all his toil. This is God's gift to man. May God add his blessings to his word. Amen. I now invite Pastor Marcellus Henry to do the sermon for this funeral service. Good morning. On behalf of our church, which is around the Reverend Baptist Church, I would like to extend our condolences to the Henry family and to the Berean Baptist Brethren. I know that the passing of a loved one is always a difficult thing to bear. We never get used to death. If someone dies for us today, we mourn, and someone else dies tomorrow, we do the same thing. And the following week, the same, because there is something about death that destabilizes us. It destabilizes our family, our friendships. It disrupts our lives. It just brings all kinds of negative things with it. As we read the Bible, we discover that death was not, the, was not an original aspect of man's life. God created Adam and Eve, and he gave them life, not death. Death was the result of sin. In Romans 5, 12, the Apostle Paul says, Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death is passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And a very familiar passage that you, many of you might know very well, Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death. That's it. And the apostle, writing in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, tells us that it is appointed to men once to die. That's just the reality that we must all face and with which each of us must come to terms. So I pray God that this morning, not just the family members, but that all of us and each of us would consider our standing with God. That's what matters ultimately. Not even what other people say and think about us. <laughs> and I don't, I don't wish to diminish from what the wonderful accolades that have been given to our brother, and they are, I'm sure they are true. But, you know, let me say that. No matter what people say about us at a funeral service, it matters not. What matters is what God thinks of us. And God knows our hearts, and that is why it is so important for each of us to make sure that our hearts are right with God. So, I want to just share a few thoughts with you from Psalm 73. So if you give me 10 or 15 minutes, I'll be done. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. We pray that your word would go forth in the power of the Spirit, that it would minister to our hearts, and bring forth fruit in our lives for your honor and for our eternal good. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 73, I'm reading from verse 23 to verse 26. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterward, you will receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. The word of the Lord. So let me ask you a question. If you were given an opportunity to take, to take one thing with you when you died, when your day comes to die and someone comes and says, well, before you die, we want you to tell us what you want to take with you to the grave. 
what would you take with you? Just think about it for a moment. What would you take with you? I think when it all boils down, each of us will realize that there is nothing we can take with us to the grave. Why? Because the things of this life are of absolutely no value in the next life. They will not do in the grave, certainly, and they definitely will not contribute anything to our eternal well-being. But I want, to, I want to add quickly, there is something that we can take with us. It is not physical or tangible, something you can touch or hold, and that is the most important thing for us. It must be for us the most important thing. When our lives come to an end, what will matter most is our personal relationship with God. That's it. You can go with God. God's promise to his people in both the Old and New Testaments was that he would never leave them nor forsake them. That he would hold their hand, he would walk with them, he would be with them. And we know that Brother Zephyrus was one who knew the Lord. I did not interact with him on a personal level very regularly, but in my interacting with him over the years, I, in our discussions and talks and going to conference together and so on, you know, this is a man who knew, not only knew God's word, but he knew who God was. And that is important for us. And this is what this man in the psalm is talking about. This psalm was written by a man named Asaph. He was the choir director of the temple in his day. And he had, he had had some spiritual struggles. <laughs> when he looked at other people around him who were not living right, not living for God, and things were going wonderfully for them, and he looked at himself and how things were going so badly for him, he was like, something is wrong with this picture here. If I do what is good and right, why is my life going wrong? And the people who are doing wrong, their life is going right. Well, that depends on your perspective, how you look at it. This man was confused in his mind. He tells us that until he went to the house of the Lord and God gave him a fresh perspective, a fresh vision or view of himself. And then he makes this statement that we read in the passage. And there are a couple of things, there's three things I want to point out from the passage. First of all, Asaph talks about his personal communion with God. You notice in the, in the verse it says, nevertheless, in spite of all that's happening, I am continually with you. He says, you hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterward you will receive me to glory. This is the, the, the picture of two people who are just walking along in life. Asaph and God. Every step Asaph makes, God makes. And every step God makes, Asaph makes. You know why? Because Asaph had a personal relationship with God. And I want to say to you this morning, brethren, that ultimately this is what matters. To know who God is. Jesus tells us that in John chapter 17. As you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to as many as you have given him. In John 17, Jesus says. And he says, and this is life eternal. That they might know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. God's goal for us as human beings is to enjoy to enter into a personal relationship with him and to enjoy him forever. I grew up Roman Catholic as a little boy. I was going to catechism. And one of the questions that was asked was, why did God make you? <laughs> I don't know if you remember the, the, the answer. God made me to know him, to love him, to serve him in this world, and to be happy with him forever in the next. Is that true? Yes. 
God made us so we can have a relationship with him. But the problem is we are sinners. That's our problem. We are rebels. It doesn't matter what we look like. We are all sinners in our hearts. We are all estranged from God. And so the Bible tells us that sin has brought about a separation between God and man. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world and death by sin, and so death has passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. I want to say to you this morning, brethren, that in our natural state, we despise God. We hate God. We don't love God. You say, oh, but I love God. I go to church every day. I read my Bible. I, I do almost everything right. You know what it means to love God? To love God is to love God perfectly. All your heart, all your soul, all your mind. You love God that way? <laughs> That's God's standard. There are many people who think that God will lower the standard for them. God does not lower his standards. We have to reach God's standard in order to enter God's kingdom. So you see we are in trouble because none of us can ever make it. And that is why God sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who lived the perfect life and who went to the cross and died for sinners. And every sinner who comes to Christ and trusts in him as savior is declared right. That's it. So let me ask you this morning, do you have a right relationship with God? Are you right in God's eyes? And you say, boy, I know I can never be right in God's eyes. You sure, God's eyes. You sure right. None of us. But Jesus has provided the righteousness that you and I need in order for us to declare God to be for God to declare us to be righteous in his eyes. So we are right with God. We have a right relationship with him, not because of something we have done, but because of what God has done for sinners in Christ. So I'll come to my second point, but let me ask you again this morning. What is your relationship with God? Do you know him? Have you come to recognize that you are a sinner in his eyes and you have come to trust in him as your savior? And that's it. Please don't tell me about your religion. That takes all of us to hell. I'm Baptist and there will be Baptist in hell. So let me start with myself first, my church first. And Catholic and Adventist and Pentecostal and all the different shades of religion, religious denominations we have within Christianity today. We are, we are, many people are building their lives on their own merit themselves, their church, their works, their uprightness, all the stuff that people work at. And they fail to realize that the only righteousness that is acceptable to God is a perfect righteousness. And that righteousness is found in Jesus Christ. When you come to trust in Christ as your savior, what happens? It means you are right with God. That's the first thing. The second thing I, I want to show you is that this man talks about going, to, going into God's presence. He said to God, you will guide me with your counsel and afterward you will receive me to glory. What does that mean? What he means is that as he walks with God in this world, one day he'll find himself in God's presence. There's a very simple truth here, and I want to say this, my friend. There are many people who want to go to heaven, but they think they can live as they want. That doesn't work. I know we are religious people in St. Lucia. I want to ask you, how many of you want to go to heaven? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> but if you are going to heaven, it must be reflected in how you live your life. That's it. We want to, to go into God's presence, but we are not walking with God. I want to say to you this morning that, you know, brothers and friends, just walk with God. And then you know what happened? One day, he found himself walking in heaven. <laughs> all we have here today is the, the brother's body. That's all we have. The, the Bible assures us that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's the hope of the believer. That's not for non-Christians. If you are not a Christian, it, I want to tell you something. It doesn't matter where they have your funeral, who speaks at the funeral, how many prayers they pray for you, how many candles they light for you. It doesn't matter. None of those things will matter 
what will matter, what is important, is for you to know who Christ is. This is only for Christians. And a Christian is not somebody who has left one church to join another. You know how we are in St. Lucia? There are people who are church hoppers. You know, Tout il n'est pas possible pour entrer en ciel. Peut-être que nous allons dire, nous allons juger les gens. Non, nous allons juger les gens. Parce que l'évangile montre nous, côté, c'est en seule manière que nous allons entrer en royaume du ciel. C'est là que nous connaissons Jésus-Christ pour sauver nous. Et bien, nous savons, nous allons apprendre à connaître Jésus. Et là, nous disons que nous allons aller en ciel. Nous ne pouvons pas avoir un espoir qui est faux. Vous savez, l'église, tout le monde qui est tout le monde est en ciel. Il n'y a pas de manière de vivre ça, ou de faire manière, ou de traiter le monde. Il n'y a pas de manière de vivre de manière, ou de vivre. Quand il est mort, après dans toute famille, tout le monde qui a voyé en ciel. Vous voyez ça? En seul monde qui a voyé nous en ciel, c'est bon Dieu. Amen? Et avec nous qui savons, nous qui sommes en ciel, parce que nous gardons en chien, nous nous sommes en côté, nous sommes en péché, mais bon Dieu, vous voyez, c'est pour moi, 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 avec nous, ça nous n'est pas si bon ce qui, la vie nous venait à d'un bout, nous allons aller avec lui. That's it. Let me close with the final point. And there is nothing on earth that I desire beside you. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. <laughs> so this man is, he knows God, number one. Number two, he has hope because of God. But look, number three, he has everything he could ever wish for. Not in this life, in the next one. Il n'y a plus le monde qui passe à mort. Vous avez compris? Parce que quand tu es tout bas, il n'y a plus pas à mort. Tu m'as dit ça? Là, tu es tout ce bas là, avec tu es sous bon Dieu. Because you hear what the Sabbath says? God is my str the strength of my heart and my portion. This word portion in the text means an inheritance. You know what happens? Parents work hard and they're going to die, so they leave something for their children. That's their inheritance. And you know what this man says about God? He says, Lord, you are the strength of my heart and you are my eternal inheritance. There are many people who are fighting for things in the world. You know what Jesus said? What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and suffer the loss of his own soul? Let me admonish you and myself, all of us here this morning, to remember that when our lives come to an end, what will matter are not the things we have in the world, but the relationship we have with God. You have to leave everything behind. And you see how foolish we are? We are very foolish people. <laughs> we strive for everything we cannot keep. And we let go of the thing that we can keep. So let me encourage you this morning to think about these things. Ask yourself, do I know God? Do I have a relationship with him? Have I come to recognize that I am a sinner and that Jesus is the saver of sinners and I have come to trust him? If you haven't done that, my friend, then this is the most important thing for you. Because when that happens, then we have hope, not just of a, a assurance regarding our present position with God, but with regard to our future state. May God use his word to speak to our hearts this morning. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Thank you for your word, dear Father. May this word take root in our hearts today. Help us, dear Lord, to understand that we are nothing apart from you. That all we are is a bag of bones, a heap of dust, 
Dust thou art unto dust thou shalt return. But we have hope beyond the grave because of Christ. And so for those who are without him here today, dear Father, we pray that you would minister to their hearts through these truths. May it take root and bring forth fruit unto salvation in the hearts of many. And we pray for grace and strength for Brother Capri's family, his wife and children, and the extended family, the church. Help them to remember that he is with you now. All the pain, the suffering, the heartache, all that is gone, and now he's in your presence rejoicing. May they take comfort from this. And for those who do know you, to know that they will be with him because he is with you. And for the others that they too would come to trust in your son, I say here. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Marcellus Henry, for the sermon. At this point, um, we will now have the signing of the register during which we have uh, a video, a little play, um, video for everyone to see. Um, I know that some of you beyond that pillar there will not be able to see the video. and. Well, I apologize on, on behalf of us that it be that way. But all those who are to sign the, the witnesses, um, I now call you to join Pastor Henry over there to sign the register.
on behalf of the family, I would like, on, sorry, on behalf of the family, they would like to express thank you to every one of you who would have called, extended a hand of help, well wishes, prayed for, encouraged, and be of any assistance to them in this time of grief. They would like to thank each and every one of you very deeply and hope and, and pray that you continue to be with them in this time. At this point in time, we will now have the recessional hymn, Till We Meet Again. I invite everyone to stand as we sing this song. Please note that in the chorus, or you see the word again, please do not sing that word in the first line. Please do not sing that word. Till we meet, till we 
में 